As a new or even experienced childcare provider, water play can either be this angelic activity full of glee and laughter and fun, or it can be straight from a horror movie from hell. <laughs> I've had both experiences and I've lived to tell the tale and I love sharing little tips and tricks and things I've learned along the way as a daycare provider in my home and so today I'm talking all about water play. Now let's rewind a few years to my very first water play day. I was so excited. I put my daughter Celia in a swim diaper. I got everybody ready although she was already getting out of her swim gear by the time I was getting the last kid in their swim gear. I was determined to make it work and to have fun. I don't remember the actual fun part of it. I remember it being very stressful trying to get everything set up while the kids were asking me, what are you doing? What's that? Oh, when are you gonna turn this on? When are you gonna turn that on? Why isn't it going? And just all the questions uh, while I was setting it up. I remember the stress of that. But what I remember the most is the coming back in part. We got back in. I'm helping kids out of their swimsuits. They're all like running around. It was chaos. And all of a sudden, some of the kids on the tile floor start slipping and falling. And I look over. And what do I see all over the floor? And smell all over the floor? But a swim diaper gone wrong. And runny poop all over the floor. And the kids now getting covered in it. It was awful. I'm probably remembering it worse than it was. But it was enough that I did not do water play that much my first summer. Because it was so stressful. Especially the getting them back in the house after they're tired, after they're all wet and sticky and sandy and dirty and full of grass and diapers full of who knows what. Like seriously, how do they get sand in their diaper even when you don't have sand? I don't know. But I have learned a good system that works really well for me that I want to share with you guys so you don't have any of those kids falling in the diarrhea from the swim diaper explosion experiences because that's no fun for anyone. So. Firstly, of course, I have to say, make sure you're doing everything legally, whatever the licensing rules are, if you have to follow that, whatever the cleaning measures are for whatever type of water container or device or product you are using, just make sure you're doing everything legally. Okay, secondly, I would say, especially if you've had a bad water play experience, just pick a time of day and stick to it. Stick to it until you have a system down. I've learned from my own experience, the more you do something, the better you get at it and you can work out the kinks. Now, if you try it in the morning then you try it in the afternoon and you're like, oh, maybe we'll try it this way. Oh, that didn't work, let's try it that way. The more you switch it up, the less likely you are to ever find success. Just stick to one way that works the best in your mind you can tweak little things about it, but just decide what you think is gonna work the best. You can scrap it all later, but try it for a few weeks, see how that works before you move on to something else. I've tried both morning and afternoon. For me personally, I like the morning because I'm completely in control of it. There's no parents interrupting, getting kids all riled up or other school agers or whatever coming in and now they want to play in the water and they're getting all wet and the parents are getting mad at you. I try to avoid as much extra chaos as I can and so I like to do it in the morning. But I know some providers really like to do it in the afternoon so they don't have to be the one getting the kids back into their clothes. I know that can be really hard and stressful if you don't have a good system or if your group's really young or they're just, you know, sometimes it's different groups, even just the same group aged a little bit can make all the difference positively or negatively. So maybe you wanna just do it in the afternoon, right after snack, you get them in their suits, and then you go outside, and then when the parents pick up on that particular day, they know they're gonna be heading inside, getting their kid dressed back into their clothes or taking them in their swimsuit, and that's perfectly fine as well. Just think about what you think will work best for you. You can always change it later on, but just try to stick with it for a few weeks. And like I said, whatever you do, just stick to it. The routine comes when you make it a routine. The kids will adapt better if you do it over time. You won't have as many meltdowns, you won't have as many random crappy diaper explosions if you stick to it because the kids will know what to expect. I personally do it on Wednesdays. I love water play Wednesday. It's the middle of the week and that's actually the day our sirens go off for the tornadoes and it's long and it's loud and I've made the mistake of going to the park on that day where the siren actually is and I traumatized my own one-year-old at the time and so in order to just remind myself to stay put we just made that water play day because I'm dumb and I'll go back to the park again on Wednesday if I don't have a reason not to. So 
that's why I do it on Wednesday, but you can pick whatever day of the week you want, but just try to make that fun, build excitement about it. The kids know what to expect and they know what your expectations are going into it and they're just ready to follow those when the time comes. Okay, so now it's time to go outside. It's time to get them ready. What do you actually do? For me, I've learned it works best to help each child individually and just have it as a system. So I have the kids play, they just do free play, very, you know, nothing too crazy. They just start getting toys out and playing with them. I have the oldest kids go first, so I will hand them their clothes or their swimsuit and they will go change themselves in the bathroom or my laundry room. And then I will call over the kids who aren't quite ready to dress themselves. I'll pull them like behind my lockers. If you don't know my setup, I will link my daycare tours below, but I have an area that's blocked off that the kids can't see from when they're playing so that they have privacy, but I can still see the kids because I'm tall enough. So I will help the other kids who can't quite get ready by themselves there, but if they're potty trained. And then the kids who are not potty trained and are still in diapers, I will change them just at the changing table. I'll change their diaper, get them in their swimsuit, get their shoes on all in one because they get really excited. And so it's just nice to get that over with. And I do them last so they're not running around in their shoes and they're not trying to get out because they know it's water play day. I do them last. For most kids, I don't put shoes on. For the toddlers, I will put Crocs or swim shoes on if the parents have them. I like to do that with my own daughters just because they are not very good at walking yet. And so I just think it's better with shoes, but I usually don't do shoes for the older kids. And then while the older kids are getting ready, if they aren't getting ready in the bathroom, I have them go to the bathroom before I get them dressed so that everybody's ready. Hopefully we won't have to come in to do a bathroom break for an hour or two. And then I like to just put the sunscreen on as we are getting ready or I do it right when we get outside. It depends on how sunny it is that day. So if they are getting ready and it's really sunny, I will just, you know, after I get their swimsuit on, I'll put their sunscreen on. I'll have the older kids come to me, put their sunscreen on, and then I'll do the little ones while they're laying on the changing table. Otherwise, I get them all in their swimsuits. Then we go outside and I call them over one by one before I have any of the water play stuff set up. And so they're, you know, they get their sunscreen on then, and then we can get ready. So I personally don't get my outdoor stuff out until the kids are there. So much can happen. It could start raining. You know, some kid could have thrown up and just thrown off my day or something. And I just decided I don't want to do water play. So I don't like to have it sitting out when the kids come because they walk through our backyard to get to the daycare space. And so I don't want them to get overly excited when there may not be a reason to be. So I just get it out and I usually set up chalk or play food or something for the kids to do to kind of distract them during that time so that they're not bombarding me with a million questions or I just tell them, you know, Sarah's done with questions right now. I'll get it set up and I'll let you know when it's time to do it and I just ignore. And so what I typically use, I have a few things I use. I use a slip and slide with a tarp underneath it. So I like this because when the slip and slide kind of pools water at the bottom, it can overflow or drain onto the tarp and then there's little places for the little ones to splash. And then I've used a splash pad, which is really, really fun. And it's got different letters on it and animals. So they can kind of play games on that as well. Like I spy or, you know, have them jump on different animals or letters that they see. I also have a water table that I use. Mostly the little ones really like it. And I just have tons of scoopers and buckets and paintbrushes and stuff like that. I also have an octopus sprinkler that I bring out from time to time on the really, really hot days. I find my kids typically don't like to run through the sprinkler unless it's like unbearably hot because the water is very cold. And so if they're not going to play in it, I don't want to waste the water. Occasionally I will do a water blob, which is basically this just amazing thing, like basically like a water trampoline, I guess you could say. And it's, you fill it with water, but this one I have to do the night before because it takes like a hour or two to fill up and I recommend you drain them after a couple days because they will kill the grass underneath but but they are a fun thing to do I do them once or twice a summer so I usually do it in a certain order I usually fill up the water table first so that the little ones who are the most prone to meltdowns will be satisfied for a while then I'll get the slip and slide all hooked up, and then the splash pad, and then the sprinkler last. And then I like to do a lot of other things just in addition to all of the bigger fun water play stuff. Like I said, I use paintbrushes, so the kids just take buckets of water around and they paint 
the playhouses, they paint each other, they paint the fences, and it's not really paint, it's just water, so it's easy and it dries. We like to fill up spray bottles and water the plants. Sometimes they spray each other if they're in a good mood and they're not getting mad, I let them do it. Otherwise, I have a rule where you don't spray each other, but sometimes, sometimes I have some wiggle room. And then like I said, scoopers, funnels, buckets. I sometimes get out the trucks and the little ones like to push the trucks in the water. And then I also like to get out our bubble machine and have that going just for an added level of excitement. And then sometimes I play music just to make it even more fun and they'll do like little dance routines down the slip and slide and stuff like that. And it's just, just a blast. As far as my rules for the kids, I like to keep it pretty simple, but my main rules are no splashing a friend unless they ask or say it's okay. You can only dump water on yourself. Keep your mouth off the items, although that never happens. So I always wash the scoopers and the paintbrushes and all of those things that they're handling in the dishwasher on the sanitize cycle that day or the next day before they play with them again, just because there's germs everywhere. No touching the bubble machine or it gets turned off and the kids know if they're abusing these rules excessively they will have to go onto the patio and if it's really they're just not listening at all they'll have to get back into their regular clothes. That rarely ever happens but you do it once and they'll usually remember. <laughs> as far as safety, obviously supervise the children, be watching them the whole time. I personally don't do a wading pool just because of the liability and you just never know and I just don't want to risk it. And then I try to keep the water away from the concrete areas if possible just because they get slippery and especially since the kids are barefoot, I just don't want them tripping and falling. And then, you know, if you're gonna incorporate a slide, just do it with caution. I do sometimes set the sprinkler up next to the octopus sprinkler up next to the little tyke slide. And so it makes it like a water slide, but um, you know, when you put it on the really big slide, sometimes they can get going really fast. So just use your judgment, but obviously fun does come with some risk. Okay, so you've done all the fun stuff, you've gotten through, and it's time to come in. What do I do? About 10 minutes before we're gonna go in, I turn off all the water, I start to drain it. You know, I sometimes, like 20 minutes before, will turn off the water, let them just kind of play in whatever water is left. Then 10 minutes before we go in, I drain everything, rinse it, I spray the water table with a bleach solution, and then I will usually either lay, leave the splash pad, the tarp, and the slip and slide just laying out to dry in the sun for the rest of the day or I will just sling it over our fence to dry off while nap and lunch and all of that is happening and then I will hose off the kids legs get all the grass and dirt and whatever off of them and then it is time for them to sit down so I have my little kid table set up I put their water bottles there I put their towels there I help them wrap up and then they sit and they know once we're sitting we don't get back up because unless they're toddlers and they just do whatever the heck they want um, so they sit and they relax they drink their water get hydrated and cool off or warm up, I guess is more accurate, in their towels and they wait. And so what I do at this time, I put the tables like right in front of my door, but slightly off skew. So I can still see the kids, but they can't see kids getting changed inside just for privacy. So then I call the kids in one at a time. I fill up a bucket of water, like a dish bucket of water, and I put it right outside the door. The kids, when it's their turn, they bring me their water bottle and their towel. They hand it to me, they step into the water to clean off their feet and I kind of help, you know, get their legs if they're still a little dirty and then I pick them up and put them on a towel or their towel and their towel starts like my towel pile. Then I dry them off, we get them dressed, then they go get their nap stuff ready and I can still see everybody from where I am because it's the daycare room and then the kids are just right outside the door. And so I usually do the oldest kids first because they're the most responsible and they're gonna get their nap stuff out because they nap in that room. And then I just call them one at a time. I try to do the toddlers last. They do try to run in. If they do that, I usually just stick them in their locker um, and have them wait and I close the gate so they can't run around the house and try to keep them in one spot so they're not running around. But I try to do them last because I just do them on the changing table. So everybody comes in, I put all their water bottles back in the little water bottle container, and then I just pile all of their towels and swimsuits on top of each other, and it makes a big pile that I could just throw in the laundry. The bigger kids I will have just, you know, get themselves dressed quick if I, you know, have the availability to supervise and everything. Otherwise, I just help them individually. 
as they come in. So once all the big kids are in, I bring the little ones in and I will take them one at a time to the changing table. I'll change their diaper, get them changed. And I don't use swim diapers anymore for the toddlers and the babies. I just use a regular diaper with a reusable swim diaper over it. I've picked up at garage sales and things and that helps you know keep their diaper from getting all wet from the water and it helps you know the water getting all gross from them um, and it just keeps them really sealed up tight and good until it's time to get changed so i'll bring them up to the changing table take them all their stuff off clean them and change their diaper and then put their clothes back on and while i'm doing this the bigger kids are either getting out their nap stuff if they haven't already or they're just sitting and looking at books so i try to have an expectation of what they're going to do that's very calm and quiet since they were just running around for probably two hours outside in the water and this helps me be able to focus on the little ones who usually at this point are really prone to meltdowns because they're tired and they're hungry and they've been playing so hard for so long and it's the changing of the temperatures and they're changing of the clothes and they're sticky and there's just so many reasons to melt down so i really highly suggest you give the bigger kids something quiet calm to do set that expectation follow through so that you can focus on the littler ones get them calmed down keep yourself calm before it's time to move on. So once everybody is back in their normal clothes, they've gone potty, they've gotten their nap stuff out, I grab the big pile of all the towels, all the swim reusable diapers, all the swimsuits, and I throw it in the wash in the laundry room and I wash it right then so I don't have to worry about it getting washed later. And then all that's really left at that point is just the final cleanup. I will, if I didn't spray down the water table before, I'll do that when all the kids go home. I will collect the slip and slide and all that, hose them off if I need to do any further cleaning of those. I'll do that either in the afternoon or after the kids go home. And then I just throw it in the garage and it's ready again for the next week. So that is how I do water play. I would love to know any other tips, tricks, things you like to do on top of just the main water play stuff what extra things do you like to do to incorporate your water let me know on our community tab if you go over to our community tab you can find the thumbnail for this video and leave your comments there since youtube has disabled our comments i get so many questions asking why it's because of minors in our video i don't know why some channels have comments and they have minors and some don't but it's just the way it is right now so if you could head over to our community tab we'll keep the conversation going there thank you guys so much for watching i will see you next time have fun doing your water play. Bye guys.